Hi, I'm Master Dominic Violante of Avon Kempo and Aikido Academy, located in Avon, Connecticut. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate some of the different uses on how the chopsticks can be used as a weapon. Uh, if you might notice the grip that I have on these uh, uh, chopsticks, uh, it gives me the ability to be able to strike from all angles, uh, poking to the throat. The back pressure from my thumb holds this in place and having it through my fingers, this finger here keeps this in place, keeps pressure on it. Um, and I'll demonstrate a little bit later when we start to do some techniques on how we get into this position when we're holding them. I'm going to demonstrate and give you some examples of different chopsticks. These are made of wood. Uh, there's many different types of chopsticks. These are made of a resin material found uh, more in like a, a restaurant that would need to wash them over and over again instead of throwing out wooden chopsticks all the time. Uh, these are very sturdy and they're, they're great for the techniques that we'll demonstrate as well. These are made of titanium, uh, which were uh, given to me from someone who custom makes and works with titanium uh, products. Uh, he anodized them so that they're different colors as well. Uh, these are very sturdy. These are great for the techniques and I'll be using these to demonstrate a little bit later. And then we have a much shorter period. You can see the difference in the sizes. And these are for uh, what children would learn on. These are made of aluminum, so they're lightweight for someone to use and uh, much easier to handle for a smaller hand or, or a, younger, a younger person to use. The way we're going to use the chopsticks today um, the Japanese and the Chinese have two different ways of using the chopsticks when using for a defensive uh, weapon. The Chinese uh, have a grip that looks more like this. So you see their, their stance and they may, they may take a defensive stance like this and be able to strike at different angles and so on and so forth. I can do reverse strikes and come in with this end and, and each end of it. And then the, uh, the Japanese way or Okinawa way of using them would be used in this position here. So I would have a grip in each hand and use them like this. And then when I wanted to use the other end, I would just move my thumb out of the way and use the other end if I had to. Um, they can also be used with uh, both in one hand, which I will also demonstrate during our um, uh, demonstration of technique. So you're going to see me have three different grips, uh, double grip to, or two in one hand, uh, one in each hand in this position, or one in this grip here, and then of course I'll de also demonstrate the uh, that grip that I showed before, uh, and show you how to get into this grip as well. I have the the um, chopstick between my thumb and my index finger. So I don't really have them separated. I take my other three fingers, the middle of the ring and the pinky, and I start to maneuver this and then my thumb slides over. The chopstick that's going down is in front of the other chopstick. Is that what you were talking about? Here? Yeah, I thought you meant that. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so if you look, I move this and my thumb goes to here, and now I have that lock. Okay? You can you can steer with this on either end, right? I can I can thrust, I can try to throw with this with this cross. There's so many different things that you can use in this. I just wanted to show you this. And like I said, this, this actually came from someone who was a drummer. It was twirling and doing all sorts of tricks with his drumsticks. Okay. This technique, clearing, striking, right, that strikes him right into the temple, hook, and coming straight down to the eye. So please don't poke each other in the eyes. Okay. Right? Strike to the temple. Right? So I'm using the top one to block, the middle one to strike, and then the top one's going to jab to the eye. Because it comes straight down. So we use the three different parts of this. Okay. Blocking, striking, and steering. This will be right into the eye. Right? This could also go to the filter too. John Payne's a lot of things. So when she punches, I can also hook with it. And you can see that this motion slides 
and it allows me to move in. I can strike to the eye, I can strike to the groin with it, I can come up and strike to the throat with it. And I told you before that this cross allows me to choke and control with the chopsticks and then straight down into the sternum or reach the groin and so on and so forth. You can also strike up into this area here with it as well. Right? So when the punch comes in, I can block it and move out of the way and make sure I can do different things. I can tip the head back and come down with the opposite end, right into the eyes with it. This is for somebody, he's going to grab my shoulder from behind with this hand. So he's grabbing my shoulder like he's going to spin me and pop me in the face. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn and I'm going to strike into the bicep. As I strike into the bicep, I reach down to the groin and I remove my thumb and strike up under the chin and then into the throat. Okay? Well, watch again. So he grabs, I turn, and I strike to the bicep, into the groin, I remove my thumb, and I come up under the chin, and then strike. Now, I want you to watch, as I turn, he's going to throw a punch, and I'm going to block. And I can still do all the same things I just did. If I want to, I can tap this hand as well. All right? What does that feel like for the bicep? Not great. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's a stinger. Okay, so strike, groin, up under the chin that exposes the throat. So the first one is to the bicep. My thumb's on the end. First one's on the bicep. To the groin, I remove the thumb. I come up and then put the thumb back on for this strike here. And then do that a couple of times, then add the punch. As the punch comes in, I'm going to block. I can hook with this. Right? Or I can block in here, or even on the bicep, on the uh, forearm. The only thing the problem is, the smaller the area you start to go, the more precise you have to be. The technique with both of them in the same hand, the same technique, the next step, I'm going to strike and do everything. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to strike with both of them. Both of them to the groin, both of them on the hand, both of them here. If he throws a punch, it'll just be an empty hand block. And I can still do the technique with, with two of them. So try them with both in one hand, and when you do the punch, you're going to block empty hand. So I, I, you know, I turn and I'm doing this, I'm, I'm blocking here, but everything still stays the same. My, thumbs would be, my thumb would be over both of them. I would release to do this strike and then back to here. So I strike the bicep, the thumbs on you, the groin, I release so I can use the opposite end, and then back on. But why do I put my thumb here? So they don't, they don't move on, right? And that just gives you more stability. So I want to show you something from uh, the Kung Fu version of these, um, and this this um, is extremely popular amongst the you know the Kung Fu styles when they're when they're using these. Now with the, the um, chopsticks in this position, this can be used to uh, this can be used to to block and you know, to hook. It can be used to block this way. And coming down and striking the top of the hand or the back, uh, top of the hand or the, or the arm, right into the wrist. Um, it can be used to do this. Walk inside. Boom. You notice what I did was I just released my thumb and struck it here. Or this could be striking here into the carotid artery. Right. And we know the what the sternum feels like. Right. Very vulnerable. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice. We're going to start from the cat stand, and as the punch comes in, I'm going to walk outward with this. Both of them are going to strike the eyes followed by feet to the temple. Okay? So it's going to be a one, two. And you can see the position that I'm in right now. It allows me to turn and do a stretch to the groin at the same time. Right? And we're going to build off of this. So from here, I'm blocking the strike upward. Double strikes into the eyes, temple, uh, both temples, and then to the groin. And when I strike to the groin, this is coming up and underneath me hooking. All right. So if it's, you're doing it to a, a male attack and it's going to hook into the scrotum, 
All right, if it's a female attack, it's going to hit the pubic bone somewhere. Right? So from here, I'm in a calf stance, walk, from the two, and then turn it to here. All right, with that striking nose, I'm going slightly up. All right? I'm, I'm not moving my stance, so when the punch comes in, I'm here, but I step out of that stance. And all I'm doing from here is just pivoting my feet and striking. Okay? Now, this strike can also be here. Sorry, I know that hurts. Right into the, right into the, from the lottery area. Okay? That's what we're going to build on. Some stuff for jujitsu. So uh, the first one uh, will be uh, actually pretty simple. Be for a double wrist grab technique, coming over and applying, you know, applying a, a double knee kill on somebody. Um, I keep my thumbs locked over, and I come in, and you can see how she's locked here. Can stand up, and she's locked in that position, and then I can drive a knee into the face, which would, you know, help a person sit it down. Sorry. So the first one. Come to here, boom, do the knee. And the second one is for a choke, and, and I'm being choked, and I'm going to come in right into both biceps, drive the knee into the groin, and then remove my thumbs, and this would be a strike to the, both temples. Okay? If I wanted to, um, on this, as I strike into both biceps, you see it's buckling the body. I can even go to the temples, but then go right in behind the collarbones, okay, which is extremely painful. Those who have taken Kubaton class with me before know that this, there's a pressure point behind here, and it's pretty painful. So we strike both uh, biceps, and into the temples, and then down into the, into the, uh, behind the collarbones, right? And the second one is for a front choke. And I come into here, boom, I strike both biceps, remove my thumbs, strike both temples simultaneous, and then put the thumbs back on top and strike boom, behind the collarbones. And this, it, you're not going to do it on each other because it's too painful. You can drive somebody right into the ground and set it up to that knee to the face again. Right? Right. We always have you know, variations, so on the, on the choke, um, after, I, after I strike into the biceps and the temple, if I don't want to go behind the collarbone, I'm afraid I can't find them. The, the pectoral <laughs> muscles, right on top of the pectoral area, is very painful too. You saw Master West back off in there pretty, pretty quickly. And this, you know, this the pectoral muscle sticks out. It's like a little shelf there, perfect for the for the uh, chopstick to go into, right? So again, I'm coming in here, striking both biceps, striking to the temple, and then behind the, co uh, the uh, clavicles, right, the, the, the collarbone, or boom, right to the, to the uh, pectoral area. I strike the pectoral, he backs off. That allows me to, to go strike from there and do a more extended strike of the pectoral muscles. You notice all I did was just slide the thumb back and drive straight in. And that could have been to the throat, that could have been to the, to the filtrum, that could have been to the eye, the, uh, the cheekbone. Right? It could be a lot of different areas where the other chopsticks can really do some damage. show you uh, using the chopsticks back in this position again. Um, again, I can put both of them in one hand, and this is going to work both ways. So I'm going to show you with them separated first, and then show you how they work with, with them in, in both hands. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, as the punch comes in, I got my thumbs over the end, I block, and I'm going to do a take down. And as I do, I'm going to hook that, that bone on the side of the wrist, with my hand, and I have I have this grip, and all I do is just go to the go to that bone, right? Or I can go behind the Achilles, and you notice the way I'm holding, I'm holding with both hands. So I can hook the back of the leg, and I use the bone to take it down, and then here or on the back of the foot. Either way, if I go to the, the side of the foot, I hold it in this position. I'm right on the ankle bone. And I just kind of roll it over that bone. If I'm here, I'm going to use both. And all I'm doing is pushing it back on the foot and putting pressure on If I stand up and do it, it's going to be more painful because I get more leverage. Okay? So if the punch comes in, I block that punch, give a little shot here, and boom, I go right into the, my lock. 
and go ahead and move on. Okay? And for the camera's sake, try to make the ball on the other side. So if I have that foot trapped, if I have to move on. So if I have the foot trapped, and, I, and I'm glad you brought that up, right? So I do my strike and my takedown, and I notice that Master Chris is wearing uh, high top sneakers. I'm going to take the opposite hand and grind across that shin. All right. And when I do that, I not only grind across it, I roll the chopstick. So when I'm here. Now some of the chopsticks have a, if they're wood, they have a square shape to them on the end. And you roll that corner, catch that corner of that, that chopstick on there, and that's gonna hurt. Alright? So you also, you know, again, keep that foot tucked under your arm so you can't get kicked with it. And he may try to kick with the other foot, and if he does, I can block with the chopstick, right? Or I can I can strike him here or in here too, or to the groin if I'm down here. Right? So, we want to affect the, the foot of the leg, I can just line that right across the shin. This uh, next technique can work from either grip. It's going to work from, from the Chinese grip, or it's going to work from the, the Japanese grip. Okay? Um, you'll I'll let you try it both ways and see which grip you like better on this particular technique. Alright? Right. Uh, punch comes in, I'm going to stay on the inside. But when I do, I'm going to get to here and I'm going to strike it and take that. Alright? And I'm, I'm using the wider end as opposed to this end. Right? You can use either end. If I'm using it this way, I'm here, and I just remove my thumb, and I use the same type of takedown inside the leg. Now, this is a, obviously we know this is a very sensitive area in here, so if I'm doing this, I'm here, bam, and this is a strike, bam, and I'm, I'm striking him to the ground like that. Now what that's going to do is it's going to put a little bit of deadening into that leg. But you see the way he landed? I'm going to come down right in here with the point, and then right get to the ground. Okay? So if his foot is in this position, I'm coming down right on top of the foot. And then I'm coming into the groin. If this foot leg is sideways, I'm coming right below the ankle bone. And all I'm going to do is drop this knee and pick the other one up and check right to the groin. Okay? Watch again. Right, takes, does it take down, left, left. Left hand in the last two strikes. Thumb goes back on top. One, two. Okay? Also, I'm on my left knee for those last two strikes. When I do the takedown, I'm on my right knee. All I do is just switch knees. All I'm doing is just pivot. One, two. That allows me, from this position, to get back up on guard again. Block. Strike for the takedown. Strike. And if I want, I can kneel on that. Right? And then go into here. I get off of it, so I don't hurt him. But if I put on my weight <laughs> on that part of his leg, that hurts. We know that. <laughs> he was a, he was a, a doubter. <laughs> I did not doubt. It was not doubt. Now, I did it from this. One, two. If I do it from here, it's, it doesn't change. One, remove the thumb. Boom, two. Strike, and then go into the ground with it. Okay? This strike here to the top of the foot is extremely, extremely painful. Right? Kneeling on the leg when it's in this position, you hurt because I'm kneeling on the side of the shin bone and part of the calf muscle at the same time. And all that, ah. that downward pressure, if you, put, you put all your weight on it from kneeling position. And it's just, your, the, the shot to the groin may not even be necessary. But because of the tempo, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> All 
I have regular grip here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to place this right on the thumb. And you can see what it's doing. Right on the, the main knuckle of the thumb. Now, if I, I can do it on both sides at the same time, I'm using that same kind of C grip, right? That C clamp. And I go right on that knuckle, just like you would for the Kubatai. You can see the reaction it's having. So when we do, if we, if we were using the Kubatai for a handshake, we place that right on the, on the knuckle. And you can see the chopsticks can do the same thing. For the lapels, all I'm going to do is I'm holding them in this position, and I bring my thumbs underneath the hands and squeeze. And you can see the reaction. Because I'm right on that knuckle, and that knuckle is only covered by skin. And when I grind that hard metal surface against it, the nerves in, the, in that area feel that the most. All right? And again, it's just like doing the, the handshake technique with the Kubitai. So when I'm here, I come up and I'm, I'm clamped and I'm squeezing with my thumbs and with the, with the chopsticks. And when I put those on there and I clamp. And I can turn my control, I can do different things and get rid of this. Right? So let's, I'm here, whether my thumbs are here or here, and I just slide them onto here. Now, if I wanted to, I could do a little shot for the temple and a distraction so I can get into this and not have to worry about that her resisting. And, and of course, that could either be a shot to the temples, that can be a shot to the eyes, the throat, that can be a shot to the pectoral area, sternum, so on and so forth. And I can go into this. And if you guys remember from when, we, when I did the cell phone techniques, imagine getting that dug in the top of your head while this is getting dug into your knuckle. When it comes to that, recognizing something, hey, that's not just a pencil. Now I can use the pencil like the chopstick. Mm -hmm. I can use a pencil like the Kubaton. I can do all the techniques from the cell phone using a pen or a pencil. So things that we take for granted, it's just a writing instrument, it can become a weapon for us.